with the appropriate tools to get your point across is a valid, a valuable tool in, in life. Okay. When do we use the interquartile range and the quartiles to describe data? Well, typically these tools are used whenever we have a very highly skewed distribution. Okay. You know. The standard deviation and the mean are not going to work real well with a picture like this because they don't have those prop, they're not resistant. Those very small values are going to cause the mean and the standard deviation to, you know, sort of not give us the complete picture about what this data is telling us. Okay? So the tools of using the interquartile range and the quartile are typically whenever we have highly skewed distribution. Now that's not saying you can't use these at other times, but primarily if you're going to have a highly skewed distribution, these tools are probably better to use than talking about the mean or the standard deviation. Okay. They give us a little bit better information about what the picture looks like. Okay. If I was just to list the standard deviation and the mean for this data set, it wouldn't give us a clear picture. But by using the quartiles, I hopefully am getting a better idea of what the shape of this picture looks like. Okay. All right, and then one last thing for the IQR. Um, if we're using these for highly skewed distributions, at the beginning of class we talked about potential outliers for bell-shaped distributions. We can talk about potential outliers for skewed distributions by using this measure of spread over here. Okay, and for distributions, it's often not easy to identify what an outlier is, but uh, potential outliers for skewed distributions, what you're going to look at is you're going to look at 1.5 times the IQR, and then a potential outlier is if x is less than first quartile minus this value, or x is greater than q3 plus this same 1.5 times IQR. Now, if we go to our examples that we worked with, we can try to use those examples to see if there are any outliers or potential outliers. So for the example one of the weights, we had a minimum value of 103. Maximum value of 125, or sorry, 227. Okay. Our first quartile was what? What was the first quartile for our weight data? 32. Okay. What was the second quartile? Okay. And then what was the third quartile? Okay. So if we use this IQR stuff and we look at this data right here, do we have any potential outliers? Well, all we're going to do, first things first, figure out what the IQR is. What is our interquartile range here? What's the difference between the lower 25% and the upper 25%? Looking at the difference of these two, ends up being 64. Multiply that by one and a half, 